court. We got the return of Tito Mercado coming off the off the Jason Velez. How you feeling, Tito? I'm feeling good, man. You know, uh, finally got you know one of uh, many chefs that I, that I plan to take over, and uh, it feels good, man. Can't complain. What did it feel like stopping a veteran like that and getting a form of a belt? It feels good, man, especially to do it with, you know, little fights that I that I had it in. You know, there's a lot of guys, you know, like Joseph Diaz and Ryan Garcia who had a lot more fights when they fought him, weren't able to do that. So for me to be able to do that, I feel like it kind of showed up a statement and kind of showed me where I was at. So, you know, it was definitely a great step up fight. Talk about getting your fights in America as opposed to Mexico. You want me to talk on that? Yeah, I want you to talk on that. Man, I feel like I feel like everybody that that knows boxing knows that you know building up your record in Mexico don't really mean nothing. You know, there's a lot of guys that that build up their record over there, and it just doesn't mean nothing. Everybody knows that the real opposition is in the United States, and you know, um, I'll put it this way: I'll never fight in Mexico to go over there and, and build my pad my record. You know, unless it's for a big title fight or something like that. It just I feel like it kind of gives off. You know, let's be honest, man. A lot of those fights are either paid off or you're just fighting against a guy that's that really just. Man, he's he's basically dead, man. I mean, you're fighting a dead guy that's that just doesn't that's not going over there to win. So, um, you know, there's a lot of fighters that that built their record over there. You know, I'm not gonna say names like that, but it's, that's not the way I wanted my career to go. So, I definitely wouldn't be. Uh, I want to build my stuff in the United States the proper way. So, what I'm hearing from you is you think that people don't have a lot of confidence in themselves potentially if they're going down there. They're building a record to get to these big fights. Yeah, I mean, if you say you're you're the best and, and you're the goods like they say you are, you should be able to, you know, do that over here in the United States. There should be no reason why you're going over there to Mexico, you know, fighting guys that that are not even, a, you know, at least a, a winning record. A lot of these guys go over there and they fight guys with negative records, you know, not even a winning record at least, you know, to at least lie to the public, make it seem like you're doing something. But, you know, um, I definitely wouldn't uh, advise going over there, especially if you're the goods and stuff. They're just going to give out the wrong impression. And also, if you're not that good, a lot of guys are fighting in Mexico and losing now. Like, they're looking at the American yeah. fighters as the opponents. So if you're not really all the way with it, they're actually losing nowadays. Yeah, and I actually heard about a couple of st uh, stuff like that. And I think uh, a lot of them just get, you know, uh, overconfident. they thinking, you know, their coach is probably telling you to go over there, get an easy win real quick, build your record. And, you know, and sometimes uh, I heard stories, too, where they go over there and they set you up to Mexico where they have you fight a guy that you know is a lot better than what they say he really is and you know when you go in that ring you uh you soon have a quick uh, reality check so give me you shoot it to me straight you kind of remind me of a hammerhead shark you're real quiet but you're real deadly in the ring you're very tactical i want to get inside your mind what's the mentality of kind of being a silent killer in the sport i definitely you know it just depends man you know there's certain you know i feel like there's certain moments where I feel like it's the need to talk. You know, a lot of these guys are just Twitter talking all day. You know, they they barking their mouths on social media, or you know, sometimes they do it when they got big crowds around them. Uh, when they go face to face with other fighters and stuff like that, I feel like all that just for show, man. It's not really who they really are. So I kind of just, you know, when the time comes, you know, I, I definitely speak my mind. But you know, like I said, man, I, I come from a mentality where, you know, I, I I like to fight. So you know, if you're not really a fighter that wants to fight and it's not really about that, then you then you got no need of being in a conversation with me. That's just the way I feel. Well, there's a fighter that I really like, and I probably bring him up a lot because I really like him, and David Benavidez. And Benavidez has this thing that, like, my girlfriend will look at where he smiles when he's talking about his opponent. He's beating him up and he's laughing. And I see elements of you. Like, I could see you fighting a guy, hurting him and laughing and smiling. There's an inherent meanness about you that other fighters I don't see that are your age have. Yeah, man. And like I told you, I think it's just, you know, kind of everything that I, you know, I grew up in a, in a rough city. So I kind of, you know, I, I seen a lot of things, but and I seen a lot of fights where, you know, fighters from back then, I kind of didn't grow up on on this era of watching, you know, uh, well, it was like Floyd Mayweather or, you know, uh, a Manny Pacquiao stuff. Like that. I kind of really didn't grow up watching them. I kind of grew up watching the old square. And if I did watch it there, I would watch guys like Edwin Valero, dudes that were just evil, man, in the ring. So I kind of just inherited that and uh, I kind of just uh place it in my life where I kind of use that as one of my uh, one of my strengths in the in the ring in the ring and outside of life. You know, you just never know. 
Okay. So do you take that mentality with you in life or is that something that you switch on or is that a heightened part of your personality when you go into the ring? Like, I guess I'm curious about, is there different versions of Tito or is this just who you are and you unleash everything you are in the ring? I definitely apply that to in my life, you know, outside of the ring, but in a, in a, in a good way, not, you know, I'm not going over there and, I'm saying in the sense where, you know, you see a lot of fighters go there starting fights in the streets. I don't mean it like that. I mean, as, you know, obviously I got goals outside of boxing as well. And I, I kind of use that same mentality to go over there and accomplish those goals as well, you know, using that mentality. And I and it's, and it's been successful so far. So in that sense, I use it to accomplish my goals. I, I kind of use it to motivate me um, the same way as I was in the ring. Okay. Who do you want to fight? I feel like you're one of the old, like Corrupt had an old song probably from before you're born called Calling Out Names. And I feel like out of the, all the young fighters, you're the one that you want to call out fighters. Who do you want to call out right now? Right now, man, I, it would have to be, it has to be Shakur Stevenson, probably. They're the ones that, he's the he's the only fighter right now that they're kind of blown up to be the next Floyd Mayweather. You know, a lot of people are talking about them Haney, but I don't think they're really sold on him. I think... A lot of the people were kind of sold a little bit on, on, on Shakur Stevenson, and they say he's the best fighter. You know, he's made comments where he said he would beat, you know, some of these great fighters, you know, so-and-so. So I just kind of want to go in the ring and, and humble him a little bit and show him that he's not the best fighter that people say he is. And, you know, the only way to really do that is get in the ring. And, you know, he says he wants these fights, so, you know, when I shoot him that contract, I hope he, he says what he really is about because, you know, just like you are saying, Corrupt, you know, there's another song that's saying uh, they has a title name. It's called Something That You're Not. You know, a lot of these fighters are pretending there's something that they're really not. And once they get in that ring or, or once they get that contract, they, they're not the same person that they they portray to the media. So I think that I like that you're calling out Shakur. I think the problem with that is you got to kind of get your way up in those contentions. You got to get in the world title rankings. Uh, how far is that away? Like two years, do you think? I mean, you just never know, man. There's a lot of opportunities that, that come out this way. You know, um, it could easily be a year could easily be, you know, next year. Uh, it, it just all depends, man, on, on, on the stuff that we do, you know, strategies, how we get there. But I, 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 would, I mean, I'm confident saying it won't be too far from now, you know, unless he doesn't want to fight. And that's a different story. But it wouldn't be too far from now where, where we're in the same conversation as, you know, a potential potential fight. Is there any fighter that you feel like you're two to three fights away from fighting that you'd love to call out any prospect, any emerging contender that you'd like to, hey, you're on television, I want to challenge you? There's a lot of fighters, man. You know, uh, you know, there's just a lot of good fighters. You know, I mean, the last recent one that I just saw, so I, I would kind of bring up his name. Uh, he just fought this weekend. I, I would see a Joseph Diaz fight, uh, fight maybe not too far from here, too. Um, you know, somebody, you know, that, that has a lot of experience. I want to fight guys that are, that have, that have been at the top and, and, you know, know what they're doing. I'm not going over there and fighting guys that have built up records. That's not, it's not, that's not what I'm about. It's not my MO. So I kind of want to go in and step up each time I fight. I think what's unique about you, Tito, is you're going the independent route, but you're moving kind of the way a Shakur Stevenson moved. You're not taking these hand selected fights. And it's very uncommon for someone not with major promoters to have this much confidence in themselves and want to fight these type of fights, at least in the modern era. Right. You know, and especially right now, out of all the prospects right now, I'm the first one to to actually step up and take a risky fight. You know, regardless, Jason Vales has a lot of experience and, and he's been in there with a lot of great guys and went the distance with a lot of them. So, you know, it was definitely a step up fight for me. You know, uh, the, you know, he's a veteran guy. He has a lot of tricks that could have easily complicated the fight. And, you know, and, you know, maybe could have suffered my first loss you know, taking the risk like that, but that's what boxing is all about, man. I want, I want to show why I'm the best. And, you know, it's only, the only way to do that is not by talking on social media and doing none of that. It's actually by going to there fighting. And the next opponent that we got is going to be even a bigger step up than Jason Velez. And I just want to keep showing the, these fighters, you know, and the, and the fans and everybody that, you know, we got somebody in the sport that's, that's actually willing to fight, you know, not just to go over there and talk, talk, talk. How proud are you of the fact that you've won every fight by knockout? It's cool, man. You know, uh, I definitely like this fight, especially because I, I was able to go more than two rounds this time. Um, it was definitely fun to being in the ring. You know, I love, you know, I mean, I dominate every single round. So I definitely love, you know, beating up the legs every single round. It was, it was fun. I felt like I, I was able to enjoy it a lot more than, you know, just a, a first round knockout because, you know, it, it's fun for like the first, you know, it's exciting for like the first 30 seconds. But after like, damn, I wish I was in there a little bit longer, uh, you know, punching the opponent more. 
So all that training camp that I did was, you know, it felt like it was worth it in in a sense. But no, man, it, it's been fun so far. You know, uh, there's not a lot of fighters have that knockout power. So to, to be able to have it, it, it feels uh, amazing. To me, it feels like until you get to the world-class level, it seems like the guys below the world-class level or just outside, they're not going to take your power. How do you think it's going to translate to that world-class level? I think it'll be the same thing. You know, I think if you could take a shot, you could take a shot. And a lot of these fighters, especially in my weight class, I feel like they can't take shots, you know, whether it's Devin Haney or, or Ryan Garcia. I feel like they can't take shots too well. Even a Shakur Stevenson, I felt him a little bothered when, uh, uh, what's his name, Contestal was hitting him a little bit. And Contestal don't have no power, so I kind of, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how he handles the 135 power and stuff like that. So, especially my power, I feel like it's a lot, a lot, uh, a lot stronger than most of the 135. So it's going to be interesting, man, to see how these fighters, the world-class level, take it. Let me ask you a different question. Is there any fighter currently in boxing that you respect? That I respect? Um, I would say just, uh, I'll probably say Canelo right now. Just because, you know, a lot of people are still bashing him on that, on that, on that loss to the goal. But most of these fighters, and I can say, I can almost say confidently, a lot of these fighters wouldn't take that risk that he did. You know, Bivol is a great fighter. And he went up a whole different weight class, which, you know, those guys are those guys are big dudes. And a lot of a lot of them wouldn't step up to that type of challenge. So I give him I think I would give him the most respect for, you know, making those type of fights trying to happen. And I, Bivol's no one. No one's raising their hand to fight Bivol. So, I mean, now yeah. people are raising their hand to fight him because he beat Canelo. But at that time, he was having to go and fight random people on random cards. Exactly. You know, and I and I think a lot of people underestimated him as well. You know, people were saying Canelo's going to beat him, but. I kind of searched up before he had a, he had a big background as well, so he wasn't definitely no no easy fight that Canelo was trying to cherry pick like they say he does sometimes. Um, that was definitely a hard fight, and he still up and he took the challenge. You know, ultimately he lost, but he still took that challenge, and it looks like he's trying to take more risks. So I definitely give him my respect. So concluding this interview because we got three minutes left, uh, your three hundred amateur fights, you got a lot of amateur experience. How does that, I guess most people would ask you, how does that make you a better fighter? I'm going to ask you, how does that shape your ability to believe in yourself in facing this world-class competition? Because amateur fights, you don't get to pick your opponents. It's whoever you face. I think in a sense where I kind of seen it all. So, you know, there's been fights where I fought great amateur fighters, right? And, you know, they might have won the first round. And I have to kind of, on the fly, because it's only three rounds, um, I kind of, on the fly, have to make an adjustment. So whether, you know, I might be losing, you know, uh, for instance, I might be losing a round, you know, the first 30 seconds of the round, but I could easily change it because I've seen stuff like that. I know how to kind of, over 300, 300 fights, man, you've kind of seen everything. You know kind of how to make an adjustment to whatever you're, you're, the style you're fighting or whatever. So I kind of know how to make the adjustment on the fly to end up winning the round, even if I was losing it in the beginning. So I, I feel like it's definitely uh, paid a lot of dividends in my career so far. And, and I, I know I'll continue to. Well, uh, tell people how they can follow you, how they can support you, and maybe what's next. Yeah, you can follow me at all my social media at Real Tito Mercado. And, uh, you know, just expect, you know, a, a real fighter to come over there and, and to to call out all these big names, man, and actually try to make them get in the ring. You know, my next fight, uh, hopefully it's early, uh, later this year or early next year. You guys want to see me. It's going to be another great step up fight a bigger step up than Jason Velez. And uh, like I said, man, I'm, I'm here to fight anybody and, and, and whoever. It don't matter. Okay, there's weird stuff going outside my house. I got to figure out what's going on. Tito, thank you for your time. Thank you, Luke. Appreciate you, man.